Fuck movies. Oh, hey, <laughs> didn't see you there. I was just cleaning up right before I reviewed the next movie when suddenly, huh, I realized I had a huge infestation problem. Yeah, right underneath my sink nonetheless. Well, luckily I'm almost to the source of the problem, so we'll just get that settled away, way and we'll continue on with our business, shall we? Huh, a bug's life. Definitely some quality animation for 1998, but certainly not the source of the problem. All right, better keep digging. Damn, one of the first movies ever to use insects as the monster. That being said, probably too old to have caused any of this. Also, should have just called this movie Giant Ants. All right, well, that's not it. Let's continue. Brown. Kingdom of the Spiders? <laughs> a William Shatner movie? No, I I've done too many sci-fis as it is. Also, fuck spiders, I hate them. Well, if the rule of threes is correct, then this next movie has got to be the one. Come on. Ugh. Joe's apartment? Who's Joe? In second thought, don't answer that. To my knowledge, Joe's Apartment was MTV Entertainment Studios' first ever movie produced alongside the Gelfin Film Company. It's also the first film to feature animation from Blue Sky Studios, who would later go on to be purchased by 20th Century Fox up until being shut down in April of 2021. Before this, they would later go on to make films such as Robots and Ice Age and, well, a whole lot of Ice Age. I I'm pretty sure that's the only film I've actually seen from them besides Horton Here's a Who. And really, that's all I know about the movie. I mean, besides the fact that it also happens to be a musical comedy, to which I understand is not the most loved of genres, but it's MTV we're talking about. I mean, come on, you know. I mean, MTV was all about good music and cool shit from the 90s. Beavis and Butthead, a ton of awesome music videos. Oh, and who could forget MTV video mods? You know, where they would take, uh... Blink-182 music and put it alongside the cutscenes from uh, Battle Bikini Bottom. SpongeBob, Patrick, Squidward, Sandy, Larry, Pearl, Mr. Crab, and Plankton. What an interesting time that was. There is no way they could have possibly screwed this up, right? Let's check out the first trailer, shall we? When we at MTV decided to make our first movie, we knew the kind of hero America was yearning for. Okay, so looking good so far. Heroes. We came up with Ralph. Give me a kiss, babe. When Joe came to town, he got cockroaches. Cockroaches? How much? Is it just me, or is anyone else getting some Alvin and the Chipmunk vibes? It's worth noting that according to Wikipedia, most reviews for this movie ended up being universally negative, with many audiences even claiming they want their security deposit back. Well, luckily enough for you, the only thing I have left to lose is my dignity. And even still, there isn't much more of that left. So let's go ahead and pop the movie in and see what we think. And so I said to him, 15 minutes, Mr. Whiteside, and he says to me, you know, I don't like you in your house no more. Ah, cockroaches! There's cockroaches in this one, too. They're everywhere. Get the, get the movie in there. Get in there. Fuck, I jammed it. Oh, never mind. I crawl so huh, okay, well. This seems like a sweet little introduction song. You know, maybe this won't be so bad after all. Oh no. I don't know, you know, I think crackheads might stand a fair chance against you guys, but you know, I I'm not one to speak in their place. Oh, why me? Oh, I'm gonna need a join, all right. 
<laughs> and I really wish it wouldn't. Dear Mom, I made it to New York safe and sound. Hands up, Pinhead! Ah, what a realistic example of the New York lifestyle. I made it to New York. Hands up, Pinhead! Hey, man, what are you doing with that camera? Uh, 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 uh. Don't worry, Mom. I'll pay you back soon. I'm bound to get a job. I'm a college graduate. Who in the fuck mixes their coffee with a Sharpie, of all things? Has this guy ever heard of a fucking stir stick? And another thing. Am I the only one slightly disgusted with the fact that the coffee mug has a lipstick mark on it? Did they even bother to clean it before selling it to him? I mean, sure, I'd be pissed too if he'd pay me in nickels and dimes, but I at least have the common courtesy to clean off the lipstick before handing it to him. Unless, of course, he's buying it off some lady who is already in the middle of drinking it, thus being why it only cost him 85 cents. And yes, I counted it. I'm not even four minutes into the movie, and I'm complaining about coffee, of all things. Let's move the fuck on, shall we? 1500 bucks a month. There's a hole in the ceiling. It's a private atrium. It's funny because nowadays, this is legitimately what an apartment like this would cost. Actually, probably more due to inflation, but, uh, yeah. Anyway, Joe meets this dead guy who isn't actually dead, but is in fact an artist testing to see how cruel the city is. He then gives Joe the idea to seek out a rent-controlled apartment. And seconds upon hearing the idea, he watches a lady die of a heart attack and gets the keys to his new apartment. Once moving into his new apartment, we, the audience, are introduced to the already occupied cockroaches beginning to talk about their new guest. This is the greasiest, ugliest bug I've ever seen in my life. This man is the greasiest, most disgusting lunatic that I have ever seen in my entire life. I'm also quickly beginning to learn how completely unaware Joe is to his surroundings as there is literally cockroaches everywhere. Landlord! Sorry about your moms, man. But then maybe you won't be missing it too long. <laughs> Amen. Am I the only one who feels like these landlords look a little less like landlords and more like the type of prison inmates that want to rape you in both the butt and the mouth? <laughs> At the same time. I haven't found a job yet, but I'm on the lookout for something good. Mom was right. Gardening has always been in my blood. Thank you for calling 911. Your call is important to us. Please stay on the line. Could you imagine the trouble society would have if something like this was to happen nowadays? Hello, operator? Please help me. There's an intruder in my home. I I'm located at. Huh. Maybe I should have said he was black. If the police in real life had music this good, I'd be calling them all the time. After this, we're introduced to Joe's love interest in this other lady, but we'll, we'll get to them in a second. I, I want to see where this next scene's going. Oh, hey, it's Robert Vaughn. Funny he's in this being as we just saw him in Battle Beyond the... Yo, what the fuck? So basically, this is where we learn that Robert Vaughn is sort of the main villain of this movie and that he wants Joe out of his apartment so they can tear it down and put a jail there. This is shortly followed by a scene where we learn that Joe's love interest wants to use that same exact spot, but to put a garden there instead. Yeah, you get all that? Alright, moving on. We get this time lapse of the city and we're rejoined with Joe as the ghost of the girl he saw earlier mocks him. Then he goes to bed and his landlords begin to smash his shit up while the cockroaches do commentary on the situation. Where is he? Well, being as it is a small studio apartment and past the hours in which 80% of all Americans go to sleep, perhaps we should check his bed.
a machine gun? Really? <laughs> On a tiny little bug like that? I mean, the C4 would have a way better chance of destruction, and probably even a more accurate one for that matter. Could you imagine if they accidentally killed these guys? So you're telling me a group of sentient cockroaches began to harass and threaten these two so-called intruders, who also just so happened to be your landlords, right before one of the cockroaches held up a wire, causing the two to conveniently trip down six flights of stairs. Yeah, actually that checks out completely. You can talk. Talk? We can sing! Right! Very cool. However, uh, I do believe the only question I asked was if you guys could talk. Uh, quite frankly, I think I've been through enough trauma for today, so if we could just end it all right here. Movie practically reveals itself. Holy shit, a cockroach-sized noose? Is he really gonna... Oh, it's, it's just blinds. So, the cockroaches continue to sing, and Joe passes out from the insanity of it all. I mean, can you blame the guy? I'd do the same thing if I saw a bug making a puppet show out of trash and human eyeballs. Soon he wakes up, starts the day, and attempts to deliver some pizzas, but gets fired because the cockroaches decide to follow him. Then he gets fired from every other job. You're fired! You're fired! You're fired! You're fired! You're fired! You're hired! Just kidding, fuck you, you're fired. Finally, the hero this movie needed. Hey, how's everybody doing tonight? Anybody here from New Jersey? Yeah, what exit? Bada bing. He's dying out there. Some pretty cool cats from there. Sinatra, Bruce. Get off the stage, you fucking dumbass. <laughs> it's Cousin Tony from Texas. Howdy, cousins. Just buzzing through. Let's have ourselves a little old rodeo. <laughs> I, I swear, I swear, I, I bleeped for like a second. Okay, what the fuck just happened? You know, I think I'm gonna need some captions for this one. Can we get some lyrics up on screen, please? <laughs> now, I may be a dog person, as I am deathly allergic to cats, but I can tell you right now, CATS DO NOT STRETCH LIKE THAT! But I know I'm gonna land something soon. Congratulate me. This is the first of my works to use paint. Mm. Do you think he's the type of artist who'd be selling NFTs nowadays? I'm doing a musical performance at Gusto House. You can sit in for my regular drummer. He's dead. Wow, that's a cool name for a band. It's gonna be a shitty name for a band, isn't it? Damn, I was right on the money with that one. Um, uh, hi. Hi. It's a band. I'm the uh, drummer. We kick ass. I guess you must. Somehow, Cho manages to gain Lily's trust with the promise of getting her lots and lots of fertilizer for her garden. Then Joe chills out on a rooftop and begins to write love letters to a girl he literally just met. Dig flowers? Dig bulbs? Boobs, Joe, not bulbs. Tell her you dig her boobs. While I agree with the cockroaches, I'd just like to point out their sudden ability to read Joe's mind. Are we, are we gonna go back to that at all, or? Now you got Come on, Joe. Dames secretly like it when you give them shit. We need fertilizer. Lots of them. One might even say she's into shit play. <laughs> you know, really, I just don't think people find me funny anymore, you know? I just, I try my best, you know, and that's just... After this plays out, Joe begins to steal literal shit from horses and everyone else he can. You know, as one does when attempting to impress their lover. Romeo, oh Romeo, wherefore art thou, Romeo? For I am here, my love! For no apology would ever begin to express the many moons I have left you alone to endure in my absence. However, I have searched the lands far and wide, 
and I am here to bestow upon you a symbol of my love. My, oh my, Romeo, thou shouldn't have. For this bag of shit you have brought me means more than a thousand words could ever. Nonsense, my love, for I would bring you a sack of feces every day till death do us part, if it meant I could see nothing more than the slightest gaze upon your face. Oh, Romeo! However, Joe comes to find out that all of his efforts were in vain as he comes to discover Lily has a boyfriend, but not really because the guy turned out to be her father. That or she's really into older men and has a very serious daddy kink. Lily then explains to her dad about her plans to plant a garden around the disgusting area where Joe lives, only to find out that her father already has plans to put a giant prison in that area. Meanwhile, Joe receives a letter from his mom telling him a friend from her high school has offered to give him a job interview for a urinal cake manufacturer. When I was about your age, I woke up one morning, I said to myself, urinal cakes. Now, I'm the richest man in the urinal sanitation industry. 20 million men piss on my name every day. That's what I'm trying to tell you. Woo, peed on my rug thinking it was one of your urinal kicks. I mean, come on. I'm not trying to scam anybody here. Your mom was the hottest tomato in school. Oh, and he wasn't kidding. Ah, good old class 68. Does your mom still wear her hair in that sexy way? Huh? Does uh, mischief still sparkle in her eye? That cheeks. Mommy still got that saucy swing to her hips. Mommy ever give you a sponge bath? Channel R, the Roach Public Access Channel. Are you ready for something itsy bitsy, baby? Would you all excuse me for a moment? It still burns! It still burns! Ah! Upon realizing that flowers spontaneously began to grow from the sack of shit he brought home, Joe realizes that he might still have a chance with Lily and goes outside to find her working on the garden outside his apartment building. Um, what's P-I-S-N-S? Uh, oh, um, it's the, uh, bank I work for. Um, I thought you played in a band. Banking is kind of like my trade, um... Sort of a rock and roll banker. Ah, yes, and who can forget all the other famous musicians that also got a start in banking before working their way to fame? Like Steven Tyler in the Bank of Aerosmith. Or even the unforgettable Sid Barrett in Wells Pink Floyd Go. Oh, and my personal favorite, Angus Young in ACJP Morgan Chase. Oh, man, what classics. Super mulching pellets. Great. For growing things. Could you get some of these for the garden? Watch her go out and put a bunch of these in her garden only to ask why everyone's pissing in her flowers. Alright, so Joe convinces Lily to come see his band and manages to get a date with her. Then he bribes the cockroaches to stay the fuck out of his way. Mr. Smith! Joe! It's a hostile takeover! Ten minutes ago, this company became a wholly owned subsidiary of Featherstone Feminine Products. They're gonna shut down the whole urinal cake division! <laughs> My whole life's work ruined! <laughs> this is a bummer, man. That's, uh, that's a bummer. So then we go to the concert to see a band, one that will probably go on to be more popular than this movie, play a song right before Joe's band goes on. Despite all the embarrassment, still a better drummer than Ringo. I'm not a banker. I'm, I'm not a drummer. I can't even keep a job collecting urinal cakes. What boyfriend? You know, the guy I saw you kiss in the garden a few days ago. Oh, well, he's probably home kissing my mother. He's my dad. Oh, well, thank goodness, because that would be incredibly weird if he wasn't. Oh no! Strap in, folks. I think we're about ready to break into another song. Well, I suppose if you can't beat him, join him.
Anyway, the roaches force Joe into dancing, I guess, and then he flushes them down the toilet because I, I don't know, man, who wouldn't? She's practically a pencil, man. Like, you really had to go and comment on her weight? God, they really are cockroaches, aren't they? I'd like to take a moment here just to point out how unaware this bitch is. The whole room is rattling around like crazy, not to mention literal whispers emerging every five seconds. Is this chick deaf? How come Joe is the only one who can hear them? Well, I'm still a little wet. Oh, uh, I'm sorry. I, I hope you don't catch cold. Actually, I take that back. Joe has got to be just as clueless as her to miss a hint like that. In fact, I think these two are actually perfect for each other. Okay, so as the two get ready to partake in a kiss, cockroaches start pouring out of Lily's cleavage and she makes for the exit. Upon leaving Joe's apartment complex, she comes to find her garden trashed and utterly destroyed. Which, if it wasn't obvious enough already, these two did it. That's it. I'm getting rid of you roaches once and for all. One minute, 37 seconds later. What the? We'll be here last, huh? Again, I'm still to the belief that crackheads might be able to, or at the very least, come close to beating you guys in that challenge. First, we're sorry we ruined your life. Second, Viennese cinnamon. Ready? Aim. Okay, but in what way is it Joe's fault that a chandelier full of cockroaches fell on her, okay? Like, Joe did nothing wrong here. All he did was scream at her, which I think is a pretty explainable reaction. But literally, he did nothing wrong. Joe is an innocent man here. Lily then quits her job at the complaint department and then storms off. Then when Joe attempts to make things right, he finds her small garden abandoned. Then for no reason at all, the main antagonists from earlier decide to knock Joe out. After this, Ralph and Rodney find Joe and blame themselves for the misfortune that has fallen upon him. Gathering up the rest of the roaches, the two decide to find Joe a new place and get Lily back. Just break into city hall or the government or something and steal some sort of deed and go surfing on. I don't fucking know. What is all this? I guess it's sort of mine. And I'm giving it to you. What about the roaches? Do they get a piece of the land here or are we gonna kick them out like we kicked out the Native Americans too? Actually, technically, we, we kind of genocided them, but we also kicked them out. <laughs> is that how mouths work? Oh, yeah, this gag never came back around, did it? Thanks. For everything. Eh, forget it, Joe. Hey, sorry about our little misunderstanding back there. Nah, that's all good, man. I mean, you guys did try and kill me, but you made up for it in the end, so that's all that matters. Oh, never mind. I guess Joe ended up killing him anyway. In the good roach's name, can I get an amen out there in the audience? Can I get an amen? Ah, that's a real shame because I don't think I'll miss a second of it. All right, so that was Joe's apartment. So what do I think? Okay, so it's actually pretty good. I'm gonna be straightforward with you. This ended up being a way harder review movie than I anticipated, and the problem is that it's a comedy, and being so, it's kind of hard to make fun of because I feel like the movie is semi-self-aware, but also not. It's almost like the movie is fighting this battle, like it wants to be a comedic, semi-serious satire, but at the same time, it also wants to be more of a cartoonish movie aimed at teens or young adults. Uh, it's hard to explain, but overall, Joe's Apartment feels like a very campy movie. I think the biggest shock of all was how this movie flopped when it came out. 
everywhere I looked, people hated this movie upon release, and I can't for the life of me figure out why. This came out in 95! The 90s was the era of gross-out humor. Garbage Bill Kids, Beavis and Butthead, Ren and Stimpy, did this just go over the meter in terms of how gross a form of media could be? It's just cockroaches. I mean, well, there's still the lipstick on the coffee and the gross subplot about urinal cakes and David Huddleston wanting to bang Joe's mom, but all that aside, I feel like the cockroaches were actually the best part of it all. There wasn't a single real character in the movie that I could say I felt really attached to. And Joe is okay, but his stupidity and overall lack of self-awareness really makes him hard to enjoy. Uh, Lily, on the other hand, while she is the female love interest and an overall main character, she feels more like a plot piece than an actual person in the movie. And everyone aside from those two just feel like extras and small side characters, so really the cockroaches are kind of the only thing that come close to something I care about. <laughs> Despite how many times I felt the need to make fun of them. A lot of the songs aren't all that bad. I mean, the movie advertises its main genre as rock and roll, but most of the movie's original songs feel like an upbeat funk or dance song. But uh, nonetheless, they're still enjoyable. I think the movie as a whole could be summarized by that scene where the flowers began to grow from the bag of feces. And what I mean by that, while on the surface this movie feels like a disgustingly large pile of shit and toilet humor, but when you push all that aside and maybe plug your nose a bit, it's actually kind of sweet. Definitely a little silly and maybe dumb, but still, kind of sweet. And there you go, that was Joe's apartment. Now, can I say we learned anything about cockroaches? Well, uh, no, actually. I don't think we learned a single thing about cockroaches. But we did manage to get rid of the infestation problem, which was really all I was trying to do, so, uh, mission complete, I suppose. So until next time, I... You know, on a lighter note, I'm just glad it's not spiders. <laughs>